Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to talk about something as exciting as a bowl of oatmeal on a Monday morning. Yep, you guessed it, Unicode. The key to unlocking a world of languages and characters on your device. Now I know what you're thinking, but wait, isn't Unicode just a bunch of boring numbers and codes that no one cares about? Well, my friend, let me tell you, you couldn't be more wrong. Unicode is the superhero of the digital world, saving the day by allowing us to type in any language and use any symbol our hearts desire. It's like the Avengers of encoding, but instead of saving the world, it's saving us from having to use the dreaded square box symbol instead of a proper emoji. So get ready to learn and maybe even shed a tear as we explore the exciting world of Unicode. In this segment, we're going to take a trip down the memory lane and explore the origins of this mighty encoding superhero. It all started in the good old days when the internet was just a baby and its computers were the size of a small elephant. Back then, if you wanted to type in different languages or use symbols, you had to manually sh switch between different encoding systems. It was like trying to play a game of uh, Tetris with only one shot. But then a group of brilliant minds came together and said enough is enough. They decided to create a universal encoding system that would allow for representation of all the characters and symbols in one place. And thus, Unicode was born. But like any superhero origin story, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. It took years of hard work, battles with rival encoding systems and even a few near-death experiences. But in the end, Unicode emerged victorious, becoming the standard. So the next time you're typing an emoji or sending a message in a different language, remember the brave pioneers who made it all possible. Because without them, we'd all be stuck typing in wingdings and that's just not a world we want to live in. It's time to dive into the nitty gritty of how Unicode works. And let me tell you, it's like trying to understand calculus, but a lot more fun. You see, every character and symbol in Unicode is assigned a unique code. Think of it like a secret code that only Unicode understands. And when you type a letter or symbol on your keyboard, your computer goes to the Unicode code table, finds the code for that letter or symbol, and sends it to the screen. It's like a secret language between your computer and your keyboard. Now I know what you're thinking. But wait. How does Unicode know which code to assign to each character and symbol? And the answer is simple, my friends. It's all in the Unicode standard. It's like a rule book that tells Unicode which code to assign to each character and symbol. But like any rule book, there are exceptions. There are some characters and symbols that are assigned multiple codes. It's like having multiple secret codes for one character. It's like having a secret handshake for your best friend and then discovering they have a secret handshake for their other best friend too. The Unicode group did the hard work of mapping each character in every language to some code point. When all was done, the Unicode standard left enough room for all known languages with room to spare for even undiscovered civilizations. In Unicode, a letter maps to something called a code point. Every letter in every alphabet is assigned a magic number by the Unicode Consortium. When referring to Unicode code point in writing, we write a U plus, which means Unicode, and then the hexadecimal representation of the code point. Let's say we have a string hello, which in Unicode represents to these five code points. How do we store this in a computer memory efficiently? Well, that's where encodings come in. We have ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It was an early way of encoding or mapping characters to binary code so that computers could store them. Now, ASCII encoding works great for English text, but did not provide enough room for non-Latin characters and numbers to be represented in binary. Unicode was the solution to this problem. The main difference between Unicode and ASCII is that Unicode allows characters to be up to 32 bits wide. That's over 4 billion unique values. But for various reasons, not all of that space will ever be used. Unicode comes with two main encodings, UTF-8 and UTF-16. 
UTF stands for Unicode Transformation Format. UTF-8 is the most widely used UTF encoding format. It uses 8-bit blocks or 8 bits of memory to store each character. This allows for efficient storage of characters from different languages as well as compatibility with ASCII characters. The great thing about UTF-8 is that the first 128 code points are exactly the same as ASCII. So UTF-8, if you are an English speaker, it's exactly the same as ASCII. UTF-8 is the most commonly used one because it is smaller and more efficient for the web. When you type a letter on your computer, the computer looks up the Unicode for that letter, then uses the UTF encoding to store it in memory and display it on the screen. If you have a string in memory in a file or in an email message, you have to know what encoding it is. Or you cannot interpret it or display it to use this correctly if you don't tell explicitly whether a particular string is encoded using UTF-8 or ASCII. How do we preserve this information about what encoding a string uses? Well, there are standard ways to do this. For an email message, you are expected to have a string in the header of the form, so like content type, plain text, and character set, UTF-8. And similarly, for web pages, we have HTTP headers, which states the character set. Next time you're typing away, remember that you're not just typing letters and symbols, you're also speaking in Unicode code. Let's take a look at how Unicode works in the real world. It's like seeing your favorite superhero in action. It's making it easier to communicate and share information across different languages and cultures. First up, let's talk about social media. Imagine a world without Unicode, a world where you can't use emojis to express your love for pizza or your disdain for Monday's morning. It's like trying to tell a joke without using hand gestures. It just doesn't have the same impact. But thanks to Unicode, we can now use emojis to express our emotions in any language. It's like having a universal language for emotions. No more awkward translation errors or trying to understand what this means in a different language. Next, let's talk about messaging apps. Unicode has made it easier for us to communicate with people from different parts of the world. It's like having a magic wand that can translate text in real time. No more awkward Google Translate errors or trying to decipher text in a different language. And last but not least, let's talk about online shopping. Unicode has made it possible for us to shop on websites in different languages and use different currencies. It's like having a personal translator and currency right at your fingertips. No more awkward currency conversion errors or trying to understand the measurements in a different language. Unicode is like the Swiss army knife of the digital world. It can do it all. It's a superhero of encoding, allowing us to type in any language and use any symbol our hearts desire. It's like having a secret decoder ring that can unlock a world of languages and characters on our devices. But like any good story, it's important to remember that this is just the beginning. Unicode is constantly evolving, adding new characters and symbols to its arsenal. It's like a never-ending quest to make the digital world a more inclusive and accessible place. So as we say goodbye to Unicode, remember to appreciate its power in your daily life. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be able to add your own unique character or symbol to the Unicode standard. Because in the world of Unicode, the possibilities are endless. And with that, folks, I bid you adieu. Thank you for joining me on this journey and remember to stay curious, stay informed, and most importantly, stay happy. And if you like this video, please do consider subscribing and do comment for any other topics you would like me to talk. Thank you and goodbye.